Life can be tiring sometimes. Sometimes there's too much to balance with our family responsibilities, assignments to complete, relationships to maintain, drama we try to avoid, finances we need to take care of, our health we also need to consider, goals we try to achieve, and our walk with God to focus on. All while processing our thoughts and emotions in an effort to push through our own weaknesses, struggles, or fears of failure. So whether you're a parent trying to raise a family, a student trying to figure their life out, or someone just trying to survive, I made a list of five steps to help someone who has reached a place of exhaustion. Step number one, establish a Sabbath day. Exodus chapter 20, verses eight to 10. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. In this passage, God commands the Israelites to work for six days and to rest for one. And the reason why God rested back in the book of Genesis wasn't because he was tired, it was because he wanted to set an example for people to follow, because he knows it's important for people to rest and to remember him. So practically speaking, I recommend for Christians to set aside 24 consecutive hours per week to rest. It doesn't matter which day, and if you think this is too hard for your schedule, it may help to start your rest at a time like 5 p.m. and to end the next day at 5 p.m. During these 24 hours, I would encourage you to focus on two words, which are relaxation and dedication. With relaxation, fill your schedule with different kinds of activities that you enjoy or help you relax. And please note that people have a body, a mind, and a spirit, so try to rest all of them. It's okay to watch movies, shows, or play video games, but you should also relax the body by sleeping in, napping, taking a walk, going to the park, or exercising. And you can rest the mind by embracing a hobby you love, by hanging out with friends that refresh your heart, or by trying something new that you've always wanted to. After relaxation, it's important to then dedicate your 24 hours to God. So right before you do all those things that you love, send a quick prayer of thanksgiving and say, God, thank you for the show, this nap, this game, and this hangout. And if you do this for every activity, soon your whole day will be filled with prayer and gratitude to God. And in addition to this, try devoting some time to build your walk with God. Maybe you read the Bible a little bit more, spend a little extra time on your knees before God, or you listen to some praise songs. All that to say, people who are exhausted need to understand that rest is needed. And there's a reason why God made the call to Sabbath commandment number four, while thou shall not murder, while incredibly important, is number six. So again, if you're exhausted, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to set aside time for your body, your mind, and your spirit to heal and recover through hopefully the Sabbath. Step number two, be poured into. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 24 to 27. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. In this passage, Paul was explaining that Christians are like a body, where everyone is part of the body and is supposed to be connected to each other. He says if one person is suffering or rejoicing, other members suffer or rejoice too, because as mentioned before, the body of Christ is supposed to be united, not divided. So if you're burned out, another thing that I would put into your schedule is to spend time with other mature believers who have a history of encouraging you. Let's be honest, not everyone has the same effect on us. Some people are draining and others have the opposite effect. So if you're burned out, another thing that I would put into your schedule is to spend time with other mature believers who have a history of encouraging you. So I'd encourage you to schedule time with these people and allow your heart to be positioned in a place where it can be potentially blessed by someone who has the heart to feel your pain, to hear your cries, to help you process, or just be with you. Step number three, simplify your life. Matthew chapter six, verses 31 to 34. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, 
for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In this passage, Jesus, during his Sermon on the Mount, tells the people to not worry about what they should eat, drink, or wear, but to instead seek the kingdom of heaven before anything else. What I want you to see is how many directions someone can be emotionally pulled in. You need to eat, you need to drink, and you need to wear clothes. And I feel like we also can allow ourselves to be pulled towards school, work, family, goals, responsibilities, ministry, friends, and God. And to be pulled that much can really destroy us emotionally if we're not careful. And in this passage, despite those needs being real needs, Jesus says to seek first the kingdom of heaven. So if you're exhausted, I would encourage you to take some time to reflect on all the things in your life that are pulling you, and then to simplify your life by refocusing on God and asking Him for wisdom on what should stay in your schedule, should be minimized, or should be postponed or removed. Jesus, in the midst of all these concerns, said to seek first the kingdom of heaven. And in this command, there is an air of simplicity because everything is taken care of when people seek God first. So if you're exhausted, I would challenge you to answer these questions. How can I simplify my life like this passage says? What are the things that are pulling me that are getting in the way of me living a more simple life? And how can I manage them in a way to promote simplicity? Step number four, meaningfully connect to God. Galatians chapter five, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Paul in this passage tells the Galatian church that the results of having the Holy Spirit in their life is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, etc. And the one I'd like to focus on is peace. One important observation we can make here is if Christians do not have peace in their life, something is off in their walk with God. Because a fruit of the Holy Spirit dwelling within the life of a believer is having peace. Jesus had peace when he was tempted in the wilderness, when he was in the middle of a storm, and he reached a place of peace when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane before he died on the cross. All that to say, if you're exhausted, spend time to meaningfully connect to God through his word, prayer, fellowship, or songs of praise. Know this, peace is a fruit of the Spirit, and it's something you can have or work towards no matter where you are in your life. And step number five, wait for renewed strength. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. In this passage, God speaks through his prophet Isaiah and tells the people that those who wait on God shall have their strength renewed. So to close, if you're exhausted, let me encourage your heart by telling you that God will not leave you in this state of exhaustion forever. Feeling exhausted and burned out is natural and part of life. So please remember that times of hardship will pass. So wait for the Lord to renew the strength that you once had, okay? So again, if you're tired today, please take these five steps. Establish a Sabbath day. Hang out with people who will bless you. Simplify your life. Meaningfully connect to God and wait for God to renew your strength. And remember, while life can have its tough seasons, our God can sustain us and give us peace amidst our storms. My prayer for you is to keep going, for you to keep and protect your Sabbath, for you to keep hanging out with people who love you, to keep your life simple, to keep reading, praying, and to reach a place of rest and peace that's rooted in the fact that Jesus loves you. Thank you.